Hello, this is Mark from ITC Solutions. And uh, today I'm just going to show you on a, I got a Fortinet 60D here, how to set up SD WAN from the command line. Um, I just factory defaulted this Fortinet 60D, although I did go in and change the internal interface to something I could SSH into. So let's get started. I'll show you how to set up SD WAN. It's probably a good idea to do it right off the bat. It's a very simple thing to do. So let's, let's get going. The first thing you have to do is you're going to have to set up your network interfaces. And when you're using a Fortinet, probably the best thing you can do is learn to use. Uh, oops. Which show commands you use? Because once you have this, it'll show you which config commands you need to use to set stuff up. So I'm just going to say change my WAN. IP my WAN1 and WAN2 interfaces for this. And the first thing you need to do is get rid of the DHCP as well. I'm just going to cut and paste these commands since they showed up in my show commands. I'm going to do this. So the first thing we need to do is change the mode to static. Then I'm just going to add an IP address here. We'll keep it simple. We'll do the same thing for uh, WAN2. Oh, it's my bad. Let's do this. And we're just going to use 2.2.2 for this. I already have a A network setup where the my default gateway will be one router is 1.1.1.1, a separate router is 2.2.2.2. So I got two separate networks that I'm connected to. Okay. And with Fortinet, when you exit out of stuff, it automatically saves unless you change that. So you're not going to see me doing any write mems if you're a Cisco guy. So I'm just going to verify too that my uh, network out there is working. Okay, that one's working. So I can hit both my default gateways, that's good. So now that we got that IP'd, we'll just go ahead and set up uh, our virtual links. That's basically what SD-WAN is. You're just setting up a since it's a load balancing thing, we're just setting up a virtual WAN link, which will include both my WAN interfaces. So again, if you want to know what the commands are, just do your show system. much is going on yet because we got to set the enable so you got to do a set status enable now at this point just is just you don't have to do this this is just so I can show you when I go to test it when we go back into the GUI that I can distribute the traffic normally it does this by just uh, source address that's the default but I must change it to source destination IP based. If you don't do that it'll just be set to load balance mode just by source which is probably fine for your network. Okay so next thing I need to do is we need to config the members Okay.
Okay, so just so you see, we already have a problem here. You'll notice that WAN 1 isn't one of the interfaces, and that's because the uh, firewall policy is attached to the interface. So what I'm going to do is, you have two choices here. You could set the pol go back and set the policy to the DMZ. That would free up WAN 1. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach WAN 2 for now. Then I'll go over and move the policy to WAN 2, which will be the virtual one of the members of the virtual group. And then we'll have to come back in and set WAN 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over to... We'll edit 2 instead. So we're going to do WAN2, that was one of the choices. And I need to set my gateway on this one, and on my particular network. Uh, my secondary basically network and gateway goes to 2.2.2.1. Okay, so that's all we need to do for now because I have to go change the actual where the uh, actual firewall policy is attached. Okay, so we'll just jump back out of there real quick. And again, I'm just gonna, oops, use my show command so I can see how the policy is set up. You can see here that the policy, this default policy, even though it's just basically an allow all, is set to WAN 1. So we just got to get that uh, moved to WAN 2 for now. Or to the virtual interface, excuse me. And so we have this virtual link because we already added WAN2 to be a member of this group. So there we go. We'll just take a quick look to make sure that we're all set here, and we are. So now it should, if we go back into add WAN1 to our member group of our virtual WAN interface, it should be available now. Oops. Let's see. Oops. There we go. <coughs> so you can see we only have the one member, and we just need to add the second member. I'm sorry, I got Cisco on my mind this morning. So do this back into config members. I'm just going to edit one instead of two now so I can add my second interface. And we'll set the gateway. Okay. Now you can see we have two members with both our gateways set. So the last thing we need to do is just go in and effectively make these two gateways right here our default route in our in our static routing table. So again, if you know your show commands, just do a show router static and you'll see nothing's configured yet so we're going because it was factory defaulted so we're going to go to config router static and we're going to add a static route 
as just the virtual, the default static route is just the virtual interface. Oh, sorry. Okay, there we go. We should see a virtual link here as a choice. It's right there. Enable it, sorry. So basically what we've just done is we've just set our default static route to be the virtual WAN link interfaces, which is both WAN 1 and WAN 2. So effectively, this is all we have to do. I think, so let's get out. We'll look at our static route one more time to confirm. Okay, now you can config this just by, or I mean you can check this just by doing some uh, pings, but I'm going to log into the GUI just so you can see the way that the traffic is being distributed. It's going to make me change my password because I don't have one set yet. Okay. Okay, normally the way you'd configure this from the GUI is you just go to your SD-WAN. And you can already see um, there's some traffic split. Let's go to um, Yahoo or something. And then maybe um, Now, so what it should be doing is, since these are different IPs and probably multiple different IPs, you should see that the uh, load balancing scheme here is going to start load balancing across WAN 2 and WAN 1. If I didn't change that from source IP to destination IP, since I only have one computer going out, only WAN 1 or WAN 2 would see the split. But that's all you have to do, guys. It's a fairly simple thing. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, this is the basic way thing. There's other other things you can do. You can use SD-WAN to uh, set up other types of failovers, but this is all you have to do for the basic setup from the command line. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.